What the hell? <laughs> Who's done this? Yeah. Okay. All right. So far, we're zero for two. <laughs> it's a little, it's a, it's a it's little a fishy. Engineer. It's a little fishy. Welcome to the Hash Time Show, your weekly source for cyber news and info. This is episode number seven. On today's show, Dave, Chris, and Jeff discuss the recorded future acquisition and read real cybersecurity sales emails. Check us out online at hashtimeshow.com. And now on to the show. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hashtime Show. I'm one of your hosts, Chris Vincent. With me today, once again, Dave Norland and Jeff Marshall. Guys, welcome back. We're on episode number seven. Woop woop. We're getting there. We've made it. We're seven tenths of the way to episode number ten, which is a milestone. As my child would say, yeet yeet. <laughs> yeet. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, thanks for tuning in once again to the Hash Time Show. We're your weekly source for cybersecurity news and info. And this week we got something a little bit shorter for you. Um, hope you're hope you're out in Rocky Mountain Information Security Conference checking us out. We're out there. Um, but for the, the time being, we did want to cover with you guys some breaking news articles of the week. I wanted to go in and first talk about Insight Partners acquiring recorded recorded future. Threat intelligence company went for $780 million in a cash deal. So let me read the quote from this and I'll let you guys fill in the gaps. In a transaction described by the companies as the largest ever threat intelligence acquisition, Recorded Future has announced that Insight Partners will acquire a controlling interest in the threat intelligence firm. The new interest will be in addition to the minority stake in Record Future already owned by Insight Partners. So guys, color this in for me. What do we have going on here? This is a, a massive deal. You know, we talk a lot about threat intelligence in, in our podcast because it's near and dear to our hearts. It's important. It's, you know, as we say, the, the basics of a SOC. Um, but this is a huge deal. I mean, $780 million for threat intelligence partner. You know, Recorded Future has done a, a great job of marketing themselves and being out there in, in the press. You know, there's lots of other vendors out there that do the same thing. But, um, you know, it's it's definitely a, a, a big showing that uh, people are willing to invest in, in threat intelligence. Yeah, I think it's one thing to build your own in-house threat intelligence. Um, just to kind of block bad IPs, block bad domains, that kind of thing. Uh, it's another technical leap to do what we do, which is to build our own threat intelligence and then um, make it available for our own internal operations and, and to do correlation off that. And it's another leap entirely to make that a service that you sell uh, externally. Um, you have to have it presentable and very easy to understand. You know, the, the backend mat- wizardry and obfuscating that to where the end user doesn't need to know all of the uh, technical wizardry that's taking place. That, that that's difficult to do. So I I think this is probably uh, a, a well worth well worth it for them to acquire uh, recorded future, and I'm sure the price is is worth it as well. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see how uh, over the next few months, if any of the other kind of uh, growing cyber threat intelligence uh, companies get acquired by somebody. How big is that pool of threat intelligence feeds companies out there, guys? How many are there? I've in my time here, I've been focused on some of the solutions on the you know the EDRs and the SIMs and some of the email security tools, and I'm just starting to really get my feet wet on the threat intelligence side. I mean, how many how many players are in that space? It's very crowded, uh, and I couldn't give you an exact number, but it's a, a wide and deep pool, I'm sure, of different people that. Uh, either are, are putting forth really qu- good quality threat intel feeds, or uh, say they're doing that, and you know maybe are deriving it from open source uh, sources. But you've got yeah. some big companies doing it, but you also have some niche players like the Recorded Futures and Risk IQs and uh, you know Looking Glass, Threat Connect. You know you've got some of those guys that are doing some pretty interesting things. Um, including uh, some of the dark web stuff, like our, our next article, not to throw a spoiler there, but Digital Shadows, who's a partner of ours, um, and, and some of that information. So there's, it's definitely getting to be a much more crowded, um, you know, looking at uh, Gartner's uh, market view of it, at least when they posted this market view, there's 31 product vendors um, that they have listed. 
Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely a, a growing market. I keep hearkening back to our, our hacker movie episode, thinking about Giant Mnemonic. It's really stuck with me uh, because as silly as that movie is, one of the quotes in the trailer, you know, the 90s movie guy, and they go, in a future, who holds the information, holds the power? You remember that line? Something to that effect, right? <laughs> right. But, and I, I remember in the show, I go, well, that's true because that seems to be, threat intelligence to me seems to be, have some of the power in the cybersecurity space. Am I thinking correctly in that, in that, in that line? Yeah. Absolutely. It, it really is one of the key ways of detecting things because there may be, for example, if you obfuscate traffic to such an extent that there is no way to detect it based on headers or other characteristics of that traffic, if it's just an encrypted blob, blob you may only have uh, an IP to go off of or something very, uh, you know, obscure like that. It, people searching for an IP to find threats is, is very difficult unless you have some kind of means of, of pointing in the right direction. And threat intel can be that way to do it where you have a list of IPs and it's already been vetted, it's already been normalized and gone through and it's actionable and you have confidence in it, You know, then you can make alerting a lot more straightforward, easier and quicker. So it's extremely valuable. Perfect. I mean, I mean flawless. Sorry, that's flawless. what I'm going with now. Flawless, yeah. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Let's jump into the next article as as Jeff foreboded. Foreboded? <laughs> forbade? I don't think that's Foreboding? You, for- do, you do you. <laughs> foreshadowed. <laughs> foreshadowed, yeah. He didn't, I, he didn't forbid us that we listened he to. He forbid us. As Jeff foreshadowed, the next <laughs> article on our list here, 2.3 billion files currently exposed via online storage. Digital Shadows researchers scanned various online file sharing services and concluded the number of exposed files is up to 50% from March 2018. Let me read one more piece here. More than 2.3 billion files are exposed across misconfigured online file storage technologies, marking an increase or 50% jump from 1.5 billion in back in March. So just to put some more flavor on that. So Digital Shadows, one of our, our partners in for uh, the users out there, or the users, for the listeners out there, Jeff, tell us a little bit about what they do and, and what makes them so unique. Sure, Digital Shadows is a is a pretty interesting company. There's um, they basically do you know dark web and and other malicious based uh, you know um, threat intelligence, uh, including you know known breach information, credentials. Um, looking for sensitive documents, intellectual property, things of that nature. Um, you know, really focused around uh, brand protection. So, you know, this this is pretty interesting statistics. You know, obviously they come through a lot of data, 2.3 billion files. You know, uh, kind of interesting that uh, SMB, which is, you know, Windows file sharing, you know, simple message block file sharing, um, is over a billion files exposed. I think one of the more interesting things in here is if you if you look at the vast different types of data that they saw, you know, it goes across everything, including, I mean, right here they call out x-rays and, you know, people don't realize what's exposed on the internet. Yeah, I think the sad thing is as much as we harp on people and, and the need to close ports, close various types of communication outbound, we still see the same things. They, they were talking about really common basic stuff like uh, SMB being exposed, FTP, uh, NetBIOS, these things that you would think are um, are closed off to the internet in a normal enterprise environment that people just leave open and then these viable uh, files and this intellectual property is exposed. So it's, it's unfortunate um, and it's kind of amazing. So oh, a big one on here that, that uh, um, I, I like that they pointed out that's a, a interesting to statistic is the S3 buckets, which is Amazon's file sharing platform, right? It, it creates, you know, buckets for, for you to store files in. And traditionally, we've seen a fair number of breaches where information was exposed on those pointed to the Internet that no one knew about. Amazon put in um, some features in there that allow you to block access to the Internet. Um, you know, some of the other platforms like uh you know, Azure and uh, has similar things, but uh, you know, it's very interesting that you you look at the the level of that. And they pointed out that they, while it's still increasing, you see that it's it's not increasing at the same rate as it was before. So, you know, the fact that there's this much data exposed is kind of scary. 
Yeah, it reminds me of a story. This is kind of on a personal consumer level. It reminds me of a personal story. Uh, I'll pull my gamer card out here. Um, don't play as much as I used to, only with the kids now, but a couple of years back, I uh, did a lot of PC gaming. And for those PC gamers out there, you'll know that there's a bunch of different platforms you have to launch to play different games. So you have Origin for the EA guys and Steam, Upl- and- Steam for a lot of the agnostic stuff. And then you have um, Uplay for the Ubisoft stuff. And I remember, I think it was Ubisoft sent me an email that said, hey, your, uh, your, email, your email combination and password was out on a, a dark web list. You need to change your password. Interesting. And so I went into Uplay, changed my password. Of course, I use the same one for everything because I'm my security hygiene's poor. Was poor. Now it's getting better. Uh, I had changed Steam and those. You're just things. saying that for the audience. Yeah, I'm just saying that for the audience. Yeah, my hygiene's you know it's questionable. Uh, and changed my Steam password and then I went over to Origin and I said, "Hmm, what happened here? I don't have any friends anymore. My friends list is blanked out." And then I went in and looked, and they tried to buy Battlefield Three or Battlefield Four. I forget it was one with rupees or something like that. I was like, oh yeah, someone had got in here through either the access to the dark web or maybe the original breach was there, and uh, they had actually you know tried to make a purchase. I don't keep I don't store any card information there, so it was unsuccessful. But uh, yeah, it was kind of interesting, and it was a basically a kind of a dark web sharing thing, and someone's able to access my account. So I've had some personal experience with that. Yeah, it's you know that's been going on for a long time. I I, I don't play it myself, but I have some friends who are very big World of Warcraft players. And, you know, they implemented two-factor a long time ago because people would break in their accounts and go sell their accounts on eBay and things like right. that. I, I guess game, games put in more protections for that stuff. But even, you know, even Fortnite accounts, I mean, I, I didn't realize it was such a big deal to have X number of wins and, and things like that that people actually pay for an account. I mean, it seems silly, but... That's weird. They pay for the wins? Yeah. yeah. What else is on there besides, I guess, yeah, the skins? Skins and, stuff. and yeah. things like that. But it just seems silly to me. But, you know, teach his own. Yeah. Well, you know, Digital Shadows obviously out there uncovering things, part of what they do. Um, anything else to add on this? Yeah, I think, you know, they call it out in here, and this is something we've talked about in previous episodes of podcasts, but... Knowing knowing what you have exposed to the internet, audit firewall rules, audit your your cloud settings, and look for things that are exposed to the internet. You know, you should not have ports four four five and one three nine. You know, SMB open to the internet. You should not have uh, uh, you know, um, R sync servers and things like that open to the internet unless you know they're there and you have them purposely exposed. You know, with with non critical data. Uh, you know, at the very least, create some whitelists and and on your firewall and, and limit what can access it. Um, just just know what you have and audit it. And there's so many ways to securely transfer data. It's There's always a solution in that regard. So um, yeah, like Jeff said, know what you have and, and create yeah, a good yeah. justification for why it has to be a certain way. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about this in the last podcast, but we've actually seen where there was an RDP, a, a server with RDP exposed to the internet. They got into it via brute forcing and be you know you you can detect this stuff so quickly but they could still log in and and deploy a piece of ransomware and have it spread through file shares very very quickly so you know know what you have exposed okay well short news segment for the this week our listeners out there we're going to take a quick break and we're going to get back to you guys with a very fun and silly segment where we kind of bear all for you and get into some of the interesting ways we we go out there and, and try to attract customers. And I'm very excited for this one. You, we, you'll get to uh, see um, kind of the, the ugly and the funny and the, what works with uh, going out and reaching out to people and trying to get them um, onboarded, uh, you know, working with a security services provider. So stay tuned, guys. That's coming up right here in a second. All right, guys. Well, it's time to review some of the interesting cybersecurity sales emails that we've seen. Our spam emails. Our spam emails. We're gonna go through these. Um, Let's give the viewers a little background here. Yeah, our listeners, viewers, I don't know what they are. Yeah. Hopefully hey. you're not viewing us because we don't have a camera <laughs> in here. That'd be weird. <laughs> That'd be weird. But uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about sales pitches and you know, granted we all have businesses, we all need to sell things, but as cybersecurity professionals, we get a lot of phone calls for uh, selling products. And so we thought it would be fun to kind of make fun of our BDR team's uh, 
different strategies that they've come up with to uh, to contact customers. And you know, we'd love to hear back from uh, some listeners and and hear whether these would uh, pique your interest or not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The truth of the matter is that no one's opening these emails, so we thought it might be easier to read them to you and then maybe <laughs> oh, you'll respond that you're way. forced to hear them yeah. that way yeah. Yeah. a captive audience you cannot escape all right the topic number one sim tool alerts and let's start with the actually number two the straight facts version subject line why are we getting so many alerts i don't know <laughs> body <laughs> Did you know that more than 78% of companies do not have the bandwidth to appropriately handle the amount of data being generated by their security information and an event management SIM tool? Where does that number come from? It was made up. <laughs> in, the cybersecurity, in the cybersecurity industry, it is a real issue known as alert fatigue, quotation. And it is, it, and is an unfortunate reality that many companies deal with. At DataShield, we help companies solve this problem. Do you have 15 minutes on, insert date, to see if, insert company name, is a fit for our MDR service? We we accept the alert fatigue for you. (laughs) (laughs) I hope insert company name likes our service and we'd be happy to do business with them. What do you guys think, real quick on that? Um, What do you guys think? I mean, you guys are, are, are providing this service on the back end. You guys are responsible for it, right? Does that... Would that strike you as, as being too incorrect other than the uh, 78%? I mean, it's true in a general sense. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't, I don't have an inherent problem with that. It's I, it's not super catchy, but it, it's, it makes sense. I'd probably delete this one. Yeah. You, would, you wouldn't read it? No. No. Okay. No, that subject line needs some work. Needs some work. Okay. Because I asked myself that question. Why are we getting so many alerts? I, that looks like an email that I might actually receive. That's why. I that's what. That. Oh, excuse me, Siri. Siri, that's what, that, even she didn't know. <laughs> that, <laughs> Siri, I know you're angry about this. I think that's why the subject line was designed that way, so you might uh, open it. It's okay. a little tricky. All right, all right. So let's go with the aggressive version of this: fighting with our sim tool. Whoa, wouldn't that be your sim tool? Well, it's supposed to be like it's an internal email. Oh, it's supposed okay. to be. It's a little trick we that we use in sales and marketing. To fish people? It's a little. It's a fee. It's, it's a little social fishy. Engineering. It's a little fishy. Oh. Okay. Okay. Right. Body the email. I run into so many IT professionals or insert title that spend more time during their day waiting through alerts rather than actually dealing with real threats to their network. Does this sound like you? Isn't no. it about time? <laughs> isn't it about time you spend more energy fighting the threats than fighting with your appliance? I get it. You are short staffed and wear multiple hats within your department. That's exactly why I want to talk to you. This should be a commercial where you're like stabbing the appliance with a sword. <laughs> can we speak on insert date and I can show you how Data Shield can help you solve this problem? Uh, I don't know yeah. if I'd call this aggressive, but, uh, you know. How is it aggressive? It's different. That's for sure. I mean, I, I think if, you're, if your point's to try to send different things to capture them, uh, I think this one's not terrible. I mean, it's uh, Except for the fishing part. <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably delete this one too. Okay, all right, so far we're zero for two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now version three, I think is gonna get an open. Version three is our comedic slash off guard approach. All right. And the subject line is, what do hurricanes and huggies have to do with cybersecurity? Love it, I need it. <laughs> Body. I'm gonna open it. <laughs> is your SIM tool generating more alerts than a hurricane alarm in Haiti? Cross the line. Ooh, that that's. That's cold, man. You cross the line. I don't know if we can read any more of this. <laughs> is your security team staff like the fire Festival? Oh, now I'm really offended. If you answered yes to these questions, then it might be time to beef up your security posture with an MDR provider. No, not a company that puts huggies on your network when you go to bed at night, but a team engaged in active threat hunting and full packet capture. You know, the sexy stuff that gets all the girls. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Who here is this stuff here at Data Shield <laughs> infomercial voice. Here not at Data Shield, no, not only are we good at jokes, but we're also really effing good at cybersecurity. Oh, <laughs> Let's chat on insert date about how to wrestle your appliance and pow drive those cyber threats. Wait, wait, you went from Hurricane and Huggies to WWF? This I mean, come on, places. this was a journey. WWE now, sorry. Yeah, yeah, don't don't trademark infringement. Yeah, this was a journey that I don't know if I'm comfortable with. <laughs> Uh, so we've got trade, trademark infringement, right, with Huggies. Mm-hmm. It's definitely, that's that's a subject line and in the body. It's double trademark. We 
steps in something in Haiti. <laughs> I don't know. Let me ask you a serious question. If you guys were an IT professional in a company that was maybe looking at getting help with your sim, this would make you laugh, right? Maybe. <laughs> I would probably be like, "What the hell is this yeah, company?" Yeah, I, this I mean, it made me it made me drive me to the website to to be curious. But yeah, what is this company and who are these people? Okay, and so why have they offended so many groups? <laughs> it's, it's questionable. Comedic. So we got this one listed as comedic and off guard. I would call this comedic and off color. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, off color is my middle name, so it's a little edgy. <laughs> it's edgy. All right, it's edgy. All right, all right. On to topic number two. Security Operations Center, near and dear to your heart, Dave. All right, let's go with the straight one again first. Subject line, outsource sock. Body. (laughs) 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 It's a fact that over half the businesses in today's cyber landscape are outsourcing their security capabilities to a third party. It is a smart move for most organizations because it allows them to reduce costs while improving process efficiency. This is where we come in. At DataShield, we host the SOC 2 Type 2 US-based Advanced Security Operations Center, ASOC. In our SOC, we have the most talented analysts in the world. What's funny, Dave, what's funny? Uh, So you say we host ASOC, and then at the end there's the (laughs) the abbreviation, (laughs) ASOC. I don't know it's so funny. <laughs> we have the most talented analysts in the world. Def- it's supposed to be the straight one, guys. We have the most talented analysts in the world defending customers just like you. Our team of experts have backgrounds with the U.S. government and Fortune 50 companies. Shouldn't that be 500? I was going for 50. 50. Uh, that, <laughs> that, that, that's where the rubber meets the road. Yeah, that, uh, we, Fortune 5. Can we stick my <laughs> finger in the air and catch the wind? Yeah, 50. <laughs> Took the top 100, cut it in half. It's the best of the best. <laughs> That rely on the highest level of cybersecurity. We bring that service to you for less than the cost of one analyst. We should charge more. <laughs> Let's talk more details on what the hell are we doing? <laughs> on insert date and see how we can help your company take the next te- step towards cyber resilience. Next. I'm not sure that was very straightforward. <laughs> I feel sorry for the person that opened that one. <laughs> what is it? Okay. Same, same topic, uh, sock, but aggressive, challenging. Oh, Lord. What is up with our sock? Body. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> I feel like you're fishing them again, dude. <laughs> what are these people doing? Just so you guys know, um, Literally, that's the that's the go to for our our VP in North America DJ over there. The, the R, the your. Um, okay, all right. Number 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 on the so- the sock topic, the aggressive, challenging one. What is up with our sock? Who is watching your business? Do you have a dedicated staff of world class analysts monitoring your cyber environment? You might have some security tools in place, but is someone in your organization actively hunting for threats? My team. Data Shield has an around the clock ASOC of that, cyber. That's terrible. <laughs> like ASOC. Say that again. <laughs> around the clock ASOC. <laughs> it rhymes. Oh, man, it's rough. Around the clock ASOC. Around the clock. I'm cyber A-sock. experts that perform investigations, manage technologies, and notify our customers of verified incidents. We go beyond the traditional MSSP with the ter- technology driven MDR service. I'm reaching out to you specifically because I believe your company can benefit tremendously by speaking. I feel us. like your aggressive ones are more normal. Can we set up a time on insert date to make sure this is correct? I, I mean, it was it was bland right up until I am reaching out to you specifically, <laughs> and then I felt like you were trying to buy my house at a at a low rate or something. Like that. <laughs> okay, here's the comedic off guard one. Okay, subject line: Can we be honest? Question. Sounds like when your girlfriend's <laughs> breaking up with you. Well, I don't know. What, what <laughs> transpired that we need to ask that question? Body, can I be frank with you, insert name? You probably aren't going to build a world-class advanced security operations center, ASOC, yes. <laughs> in your building. Love it. You know, those types of areas walled off by glass and key cards you see in the movies. But guess what? DataShield did. 
Whoa! <laughs> we built the most awesome. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we built the most awesome A sock in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's a heck of a sentence. It's so amazing. It's SOC 2 Type 2 certified. What does that mean? It means that we cover the security butts of some of the most iconic brands around the world. Hmm. Who are they, you might ask? We can't tell you because it's secret, just like your information will be when you hire Data Shield. I'm gonna call you on insert date so we can get your data in our ASOC. You realize we don't get their data in our SOC. Yeah. <laughs> we monitor their data. <laughs> Uh, boy. Other than the, uh, you know, the, um, you know, dating subject line, I, I actually thought the email was okay. Okay, good. I deleted it. I deleted it. <laughs> so we're all 0 for 3. Dave doesn't open any emails. No. <laughs> all right, what's next? Topic 3, SIM configuration. Let's go with the straight one first again. Subject line, SIM configuration. Body. Our experience at DataShield has shown that a majority of companies do not have the bandwidth or know-how to configure their newly installed SIM tool. In fact, we found that nearly all of our customers required some sort of advanced configuration slash tuning in order to get the most out of their appliance. Are you getting the most out of your secured hardware? Does the integration between software and hardware work seamlessly within your infrastructure? Is SIM alert volume a pain point for your department? If you're curious how to configure your SIM like the top companies, we need to talk. How does insert date sound for a brief conversation about your environment? <laughs> Why are you looking at me like I'm going to delete this one? <laughs> hey, that one's pretty clean. It's pretty clean. Uh, it's, Dave it's already fine. deleted it no, though. No, it's fine. This one I know. One. <laughs> it's bland. Now he's just giving you one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, honestly, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. This, this is probably the, the most acceptable one. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, we're getting somewhere now. We're getting accept into acceptable. We're getting out of hell no to acceptability. <laughs> okay, here's the aggressive version of that. Who owns our SIM configuration? Whoa! Question mark. Body, a question I have heard more times than I can count. That is a problem that more often than not falls on the shoulders of someone who doesn't have the capacity to figure it out. A bunch of idiots. <laughs> Sound familiar? We, Data Shield, help some of the top companies in the world configure and tune their unwieldy SIMs and optimize their appliance to work with the other security tools within their organization. Ever wonder how the Fortune 100 companies keep their alert volume to a manageable level? I nope. never have, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I might start now that I read the email. <laughs> we want to show you how. Can we set up a time on insert date to figure out what is currently going on in your environment? Sorry, I'm busy about that. <laughs> what the heck's going on in there? Bad? No, that one's a That's not bad. It's, it's fine. Yeah, that one's not bad. All right, number three, comedic off guard. I love this one. Subject line, do you even sim? <laughs> I feel like that should have bro in that sentence. You even, do you even bro? sim bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, before you answer that, the real question is, have you maxed uh, out your out. sim effectiveness? Delete. This is my favorite one so far. <laughs> At Data Shield, we take we take even the most weakling of SIM tools oh and beef them up with creatine. No, Configur we're going to pump you up. Configuration <laughs> and protein. Protein tuning. <laughs> tuning. <laughs> How do you strengthen your SIM capabilities by leveraging log management? Oh, extensive. <laughs> Extensive SIM sculpting is required sculpting. for optimal performance. Out of the box settings are like your apps. They lack detail. I'm going to start talking like this on customer calls. <laughs> it's time hey, for bro. a <laughs> it's time for a one on one SIM personal Whoa. training session. Meet you at insert date to warm up. I, I would totally not only would I open that one, I'd immediately buy. <laughs> Even if I didn't need it, I'd buy. This just makes me want to go to the gym. <laughs> go work out. Yeah. Okay, topic four. We're almost at the end, guys. Security assessment is the topic. And we're going to go with a straight one first. Company name assessment. Okay. Please continue. So, you know, Google assessment. <laughs> that's, just, that's a bad example, actually. <laughs> Wait, are you Googling me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, LA Fitness assessment. How about, that's, that's bad, too. Uh, <laughs> whatever your company name is, and then assessment. <laughs> <laughs> Body. <laughs> I am reaching out to you because we, Data Shield, have developed a comprehensive IT security assessment. Who's done this? 
<laughs> no one ever asked me about this. Just got a rogue IT assessment for them. <laughs> this is a no cost, 60 point evaluation. Make it 70. That I believe is perfect for your organization. It's like a car evaluation or what? <laughs> <laughs> You're used to <soon> this. <laughs> has 90,000 miles left to it. <laughs> <laughs> you like, I got a lot of miles left on this, Sam. <laughs> We're gonna have to edit someone's blank space out. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> you, uh... I got some e even wear on this, <laughs> this sim over here. We're gonna have to rotate this. <laughs> <laughs> We've changed the oil. I have to rotate your taps up. <laughs> okay, that, that is why I'm contacting you directly. The assessment covers important areas, including data flow and classification, access control, configuration and management, as well as topics as email and training. We have a 10 question primer to kick this off. <laughs> Now you got 10 more. <laughs> we got too many points floating around here. <laughs> we want 70. Get them Don't up. worry. We only got a 100 point question. <laughs> Bring it into one, all right? Well, the, the, the 10 are. But if uh, we get on the phone, it'll be 120 <laughs> points. <laughs> the, the 10 are part of the 60. Can we start <laughs> on insert date? Oh, man. That, that is, is not a, clear. This here. is the most used car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. You guys have seen the meme where he like slaps the car on the top of the hood and he's like, this baby's got. Is that a CarMax commercial or something? No, no, it's just some kind of meme. Oh my god. You got 80 million events left in this sim. <laughs> we, we should totally make that meme now. 80 million events. <laughs> Two terabytes of throughput. <laughs> 80 gigabytes. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh my God. This is a tough one to get. I thought it was going to be easier to get through. Let's, this is, let's just skip for the website. <laughs> yes. yes. Get, bring some old server into the sock and film one of us <laughs> trying to make a used car salesman pitch on it. This is like a appliance. That was a appliance, yeah. I, mean, so was used I don't think I've ever cried reading an email. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. All right, here's the aggressive one. That was the straight one, so wow, well, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'm prepared for this. <laughs> Subject, our security assessment. When was the last time you had an IT <laughs> assessment to determine your security posture? At Data Shield, we developed the no-risk 60-point security resilience test. It is designed to determine where vulnerability might lie within your current infrastructure. Before we get to that point, we have a short 10-question survey to see where you stand. Do you have 15 minutes on insert date to get this process started? I feel like your aggressive ones are your straightforward ones. Yeah. Your straightforward ones are the aggressive ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Okay. Here's uh here's the comedic off guard. I one. can't wait. Subject line. Need your measurements. Mm. <laughs> oh body. I might give them to you. <laughs> At Data Shield, we tailor our solutions to your business needs. That is why we created a complimentary 60 point security assessment. We want to check your dimensions before stuffing an ill-fitting solution <laughs> in your network. Woo! <laughs> Tell me more. Same time for both of us. We have a twin. Twin. We have a ten-question primer. Wait, wait, wait. Making them fill out ten questions. How's that saving them time? <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna save you some time by giving you some homework. Send it back to me when you're done. <laughs> Oh, we have a 10 question primer to gauge your security depth <laughs> and see if we are fit. Oh my God. How does insert date work for our first appointment? This is on the wrong website. Oh my God. This should be on casual encounters or something. <laughs> oh my God. All right, last one. Topic five. No SIM tool slash eyes on network slash demo. No demos? Of, what was that? No SIM tool, no eyes on their network, and no demos. <laughs> sort of like. Back it up, gentlemen. <laughs> sort of like home. a combination. Okay, let's do the straight one first. Subject, log management woes. Body, keeping eyes on network and log management are among the fastest growing concerns from IT departments that do not currently have a SIM tool. Are these, issue, are these issues for your organization? 
And data shield, we show companies how to implement a world-class security appliance and use it to keep a 360 degree view of their network 24 seven, 365. Installing and configuring a SIM along with managing threat intel are just a few of the things we do. Can we talk on insert day to see how we can partner with your organization? For once, your straight one, your your straightforward one is pretty straightforward. It's pretty straight yeah, one. that's actually like a pretty good straightforward one. Okay, good. Dave might open that one. I might open it, but okay. then I delete it after it works. <laughs> okay. Okay, here's the aggressive one. <laughs> Subject, eyes on network. Do you have visibility into your network 24-7, 365? Are you currently using any tools to help collect the logs being generated by your endpoints, firewalls, ETC, question mark. Et cetera, that's what that's like. Et cetera, I know. <laughs> <laughs> to be blunt, if you don't have one yet, what is stopping you from implementing a security information and event management tool? What the tool? hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I would love to show you one of the best in class SIM tools on the market today. It is a Gardner Magic Quadrant industry leader. Let's chat on insert date and set up a time for a demo to see if it's a mutual That fit. That is definitely not aggressive enough. Yeah. Okay. I don't feel aggressive. Amp up that aggression. Okay, I'm gonna amp up a little bit. Not aggressed by that. Okay. I, I think I think you should be telling like there's somebody's eyes on their network and it's not theirs. It's not theirs. Okay. <laughs> amp it up a little bit. Okay. Last one. Comedic slash off guard for the topic we talked about, whatever it was. No sim tool. Subject line. Who's in our network? Question mark. Boom. Body. Ever wonder who's poking around your network at night? Yep. Or, all the time. Are the bad guys using holes in your security architecture to play around with your customer data? Are they doing it without you knowing? <laughs> I just got a, I just got a picture in my head of some guy juggling boxes that say customer data. <laughs> <laughs> Are they doing it without you knowing? Probably you don't have a SIM tool. What is stopping you? Well, it's not us. In fact, we want to show you the best SIM tool in the universe that will help solve these problems and more. It's not just a SIM tool, by the way, it's a world-class 24-7 MDR solution that keeps you protected from ga bad guys poking you while you sleep. <laughs> right? God. I'm gonna put it up in front of the door. <laughs> well, at the very least, we will wake you up if they are. <laughs> Let's discuss more on insert day. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That, that wasn't, like that. It wasn't very funny. Went off a little half-cocked. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for helping us review and improve. Our outreach to new prospects. Did, did we really improve it, though? You helped me. I don't know how much better you can get than some of those. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, I think the general, the general theme here is it's hard for any salesperson to get the attention when there's so much coming in and out there. And I, I, I appreciate the, the difference that some of those are from the normal. The, and The stabs. Yeah. I mean, it's a cold. Part of the, part of the business world is, is cold prospecting. And it's, and it's something that if you've been in sales and marketing, a lot of people are afraid of it. If you're like myself or like DJ, we love it. We thrive on conflict. So it's something that we really enjoy. And so I guess from your guys' perspective, you know, what gets you guys to open up? What gets you guys to talk to someone on a cold call or cold email? What's the, the thing for you guys? That For me, um, it's I want to get caught off guard. I, I don't answer cold calls. I go and hang up. I, I, what would really get me going is when they show up in the man trap. <laughs> show up in what? Show up in the man trap. Show up in the front door. Halftime show. Let's go to someone's front door. Try to sell them a VR. Door to door sales. Door, door to door. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what we're doing on Tuesday. That's what DJ and I are doing. We're showing up. Yeah. I, I think I think being different is is important. And you know, we're 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 not sales guys here. We're we're tech nerds and we're we're providing the best possible security services that we could provide for for enterprises with as little sales overhead as possible. And I think I think that makes a world of difference. So it's about being real people. And, yes. and I, I appreciate the goofiness and funniness because you get the mundane emails that have 47 links in it or full yes. articles in it. Yeah. And I don't want to read that stuff. Yeah. Well, I think, so I actually to bring this back to sales a little bit, I think that the big thing is, um, it's not sales at this level. This is an enterprise or mid-market level or even SME. It's really solutions consulting is what it comes down to. And what I always try to do is I want to get a no fast because if it's a bad fit, we're going to get through POC and we're going to have wasted our time yeah. or we're going to we're going to get a customer that's not a good fit and then they're going to be angry in six, eight, nine months. Sure. So I think I think getting a quick no is is right. And if if they can deal with some of our silliness, then uh, they're probably a good fit for us, you know, because yeah, exactly. we're pretty silly sometimes. 
All right, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. This has been the Hash Time so <laughs> This has been the Hash Time Show. I'm leaving that flub in. That's how we do things here. We keep it. We keep it transparent. Uh, we appreciate you guys uh, checking us out. This has been Chris, Dave, and Jeff, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you for listening to the Hash Time Show. Check us out online at hashtimeshow.com. I hope it's your company name, likes our service, and we'd be happy to do business with you. I don't think I've ever cried reading an email. <laughs> <laughs>